Marie gives Merton and Shakespeare a lesson in perspective. The Little Dancer, Marie, modeled for the artist Degas in Paris, learned ballet in Paris, and art in Degas' studio. Although he was extremely quiet, he often talked to himself, and Marie listened during the long poses she had to endure. One day she decided to share her knowledge of art by teaching Shakespeare and Merton about perspective. Marie said to Merton, Peter the artist took many digital photos of me with you using his iPhone. In some, you look my size, and in others, you tower over me. This is because the phone has what is called a wide-angle lens, which makes things in the foreground appear much larger. All it takes is a few inches. Look! But if I go behind him, I can be smaller. Just like Alice in Wonderland, when she drank from a little bottle that made her very large, and then very small. Merton, you told us in the first book how the magic in the garden was really the result of an artist using art with a camera and paint. So now let's learn more about perspective. Already you have seen that things close to your face or the iPhone camera appear larger. Let's try this out as I move away from the camera and walk backwards. With each backward step, the illusion that I become smaller is because things farther away always appear smaller. Let's take this picture of a railroad track. The tracks are parallel to each other, which means they never cross or touch. But look, in linear perspective they come to a point far away in the distance, and then they disappear. Oh, that would be very bad for a train. But that's just the way we see. And when those tracks seem to meet, we call this the vanishing point because the tracks seem to disappear or vanish. If I had kept stepping backwards on the path in the garden, I would shrink to an inch high before I vanished. It was the ancient Greeks who came up with perspective, by the way. Things farther away are less distinct meaning that they don't have as much contrast between black and white or dark and light. A value is how dark or light something is. Using values to create an illusion of three-dimensionality is called chiaroscuro. Leonardo da Vinci used chiaroscuro in his famous Mona Lisa. The face is light and dark values with no lines. This gives her face great three-dimensionality and she appears so lifelike that her eyes seem to follow people looking at her. The heavy shadows and bright lights are not as defining as lines, and this approximates the way we actually see things. When Peter the artist painted this wall with the arches and urns on either side, he used chiaroscuro so the urns with geraniums almost look real, even after 20 years outside. Here, let me show you what I mean by overlap. This was actually invented by the ancient Egyptians over 5,000 years ago when they painted on walls. You see how the urns overlap the brick and the scene behind? So that makes you really believe it's real. At this point, Merton and Shakespeare were calling loudly, Marie, Marie, come down from the tree. And they weren't writing a poem, either. Marie had somehow managed to climb up above them in the garden to find yet another perspective. This is called aerial perspective, she said, from up in the air. Oh, Mr. Shakespeare, I can see the top of your head now. It must be the way birds see us, so sometimes they call it a bird's eye view. Oh, look. I can see Ceres from way up here. Whoops! I just fell out of the tree. So I can do... Oh, now lying on the ground. Oh, oh. Give me a minute and I'll be back on my feet and show you a worm's eye view. 
really, I'm okay. And now you can see what I mean by a worm's eye view. The camera is down on the ground, and it makes my legs look huge and my head small because my legs are closer to the camera lens. And look at this view of the urn with flowers. We are looking from down on the ground up into the sky. And now the camera is at a person's height, and you can see so much more. It is a more normal perspective. Merton and Shakespeare were enjoying her lesson on perspective, and Shakespeare quoted how he had used it in a poem, a sonnet, he had written. Mine eye hath played the painter, and perspective it is best painter's art. But you taught us both so much about how artists use perspective to change things in painting and photography, as Peter the artist does. Marie said, You are great students, and we must have another lesson soon. I think everybody is waking up, and we must assume our poses so that no one catches on to what we're doing. After all, we have to keep everything in perspective. They all laughed for a few minutes and then became silent as statues. <laughs>